Hi everyone, welcome to Demetra's Dishes. So today I'm going to teach you how to make little Greek style boat shaped pizzas. They're delicious, they're also known as panirli. The Turkish people also have a version of it known as pide. It's awesome how we have things in common with our neighboring countries, especially when it comes to cuisine. The recipe is super simple, so versatile. You can make this in so many different ways, but we're going to go over the basics and we're going to begin with the most important part, which is the dough. So I'm using my New York pizza dough, which is the dough that I stick to anytime I'm making any kind of pizza. The recipe is simple and easy. Let's go over the ingredients so we can get started. So in my bowl here, I have some lukewarm water, a little bit of active dry yeast, some sugar, and some all-purpose flour. So you need to do this step first to make sure that the yeast is active. There's hardly ever a time where yeast is not active. It's really hard for it to die, but it does happen. And it's just such a simple step that if you skip it and the yeast happens to be bad, it's going to ruin this whole recipe and then you're going to you know, spend so much time and waste so many ingredients and have to start all over. So you'll know it's ready when the mixture starts to fo form like a cloud on top. And I'll show you what it looks like. It usually takes about 10 to 15 minutes, but you could let this sit up to 30 minutes. It'll just create a really nice uh, sponge. For the rest of the ingredients, in my bowl here I have some bread flour. So it's five cups about 790 grams, so you guys overseas will be really happy that I weighed this. And then to this, we're gonna add some salt. Now, you never wanna add salt directly to the yeast because salt kills yeast. And one special thing that I like to do to this um, dough is to add some dried herbs. So I'm adding a tablespoon of dried oregano, but you can use your favorite herbs. You can use rosemary or thyme or whatever you like. Now, we're just gonna mix this up, and the final ingredient left is olive oil, which we're going to add once um, the yeast dough is ready, once the starter is ready. So the yeast is activated. Re what we're going to do now is add some olive oil, about two tablespoons, and then all of the flour. So all of the flour mixture that we have over here can be added. We're going to turn the mixer on low and let this knead for about 10 minutes. So the dough is ready kneading. You could also do this by hand, by the way. If you don't have a stand mixer, you can just do this all by hand. You're just going to have to knead it for a couple minutes more, maybe four to five minutes more, so that way you can develop the gluten. And keep in mind that it is a sticky dough, so if you are kneading by hand, just keep wetting your hands or putting them, in, rubbing a little bit of olive oil on them. That'll help with the stickiness. But do not overload it with flour because then you're going to have a very uh, dry bread or a dry pizza crust. So now to the uh, mixing bowl, we're going to add some olive oil. And we're going to transfer all of our dough. Like I said, it's a very sticky dough, so don't worry about it. It's going to create such a delicious pizza crust. Just turn the dough all around to coat it with the oil. So now we're just going to cover this either with plastic wrap or with a clean kitchen towel. And we're going to set it in the warmest room of the house until it rises and it doubles in volume. That's going to take, depending on the temperature in your house, anywhere between one to two hours. Just keep an eye on it. So you can also do a slow rise in the refrigerator, which just means that you're going to wrap this in plastic wrap and put it in your refrigerator overnight when it's going to rise. And then in the morning, it'll have doubled in volume. And that's going to create really beautiful, a really beautiful light crust. So you can do that by leaving it in the fridge up to three or four days, and it'll ferment a little bit and give it a little bit of a sourdough flavor. Either way, it's going to be delicious. I'll show you what it looks like as soon as it, comes, as soon as it rises. So my dough is, has risen. It's nice and bubbly and just the way it needs to be, and we're going to get to it in a minute. So we're going to go over the ingredients that I'm using today, but you can use almost any ingredients that you want. Let me show you what we're using today. So I have a combination of shredded uh, Gouda cheese and mozzarella. We're going to use some all-purpose flour for rolling the dough out. I have some feta that I have crumbled myself. I never like to buy the crumbled feta. And then as far as toppings are concerned, I love sliced onions and sliced red bell peppers and some kalamata olives. Here I have my basic meat sauce that I've made so many times on the channel and my homemade pizza sauce right here. Then we also have some herbed olive oil and some eggs. As far as the cheese is concerned, 
Cassetti cheese is a traditional cheese that's used in this recipe, but you can use any cheese that you like. Whatever you like, go ahead and use it. If you're not a big cheese fan, you could even leave the cheese out, dare I say. I mean, I would never do that, but if you don't like cheese, you can just leave that out. Now, as far as the meat sauce goes, I have a basic meat sauce recipe that I'll link up on in, in the card section up above. The thing that if you're using it, the thing you want to keep in mind is for, to keep, cook it down a lot so that way there's no liquid left in it. You don't want a soggy pizza. You want it to be nice and thick and rich, this, the sauce, but you don't want it to have any liquid left in it, if that makes any sense. And you can make that a couple days in advance and store it in the fridge. Really, with this recipe, the best part about it, it's a really great way to use up leftovers. So if you have any roasted chicken or anything that you've made, some hamburger that you have left over, you can cut it up and use it. Get creative and let me know how you're making it in the comments section. Now, next thing is, I've taught you guys how to make pizza, and this is that same pizza sauce that requires no cooking. I'll link this recipe up in the card section as well. And then I always have some herbed olive oil on hand. It's basically olive oil with a bunch of herbs that I use all the time, like oregano and parsley, a little bit of salt and things like that. It's, the, it's what I use to make my pita chip recipe. And I will, you know what I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna say, I'm gonna link that up above as well. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna flour our work surface. And before we do that, I have one final thing to say. And be, even before you do anything, actually, you're gonna wanna crank up your oven to the highest heat that it goes. If you have a pizza oven, and if you're like the rest of us, like me, and I don't have a pizza oven, I just crank up my oven to 525 degrees. I leave my pizza stone in there. The pizza stone makes all the difference. If you have one, let it warm through in there while your oven is preheating. If you don't have one, you should go buy one. It's one of those things that is a must when you're making bread and pizza. It just helps conduct heat really nicely. So bring it up to 525. If your oven goes to 550 Fahrenheit, go ahead, put that baby up to 550. You're gonna be happy you did because it's gonna create a really nice crust on your pizza, which is why we go get pizza at the pizza shops anyway. So I'm just gonna uh, divide my dough into six equal portions. So the best thing about these pizzas is you can make them even smaller than this if you wanted to. You could do about like 10 portions too if you wanted them really individual size. But I like this size. Between five to six portions is what I like, the size I like to make these. So one important tip, if you did the slow rise technique and used your refrigerator, your dough is gonna be really cold. The thing about working with pizza dough or any dough, it will not stretch when it's cold. If it's cold, you're gonna spread it out and it's gonna keep contracting and shrinking. If you've taken it out of your refrigerator, you're gonna to wanna to make sure it comes up to room temperature. It's gonna take some time, but you don't wanna skip that step because you will not be able to stretch out cold dough. So I have some baking trays lined with parchment paper, and I'm just gonna roll this out into an oblong shape about 12 inches long. Now next step is we're gonna add lots of flavor by brushing this very lightly with our herbed olive oil. And then we're gonna create the crust. So we're gonna take just a little bit of crumbled feta cheese. And like I said, crumble your own feta cheese. It just takes a few seconds and it has much better flavor than the one that already comes crumbled at the supermarket. And now we're just gonna roll this up to create a crust, just the edges. And when you get, to, when you finish on one side, you're gonna create a little point. Just like that. You can stretch it a little bit as you go. You're just tucking the feta in and you're rolling. And when you get to the corners, you can twist them and stretch them out a little bit. So you have a boat shape and you could tuck them under so they could stay put. And then we're gonna transfer this onto the baking tray. And now if you feel uncomfortable transferring it onto the tray, like if it gets a little bit wobbly, you could form it onto the tray also. Let me show you. So you can just take your piece of dough and put it on the tray. And now we'll do everything we did with the first one. We're gonna brush with olive oil, twist the ends, and roll over to secure them. And now we're ready to stuff these. So now we're gonna do this, like the sky's the limit when it comes to this, but we can start with the meat filling, the meat sauce filling. Now we're gonna put a little bit of the meat sauce on the bottom. 
About three tablespoons for this size is good, but use your judgment. And then I'm gonna top this with some Gouda and some mozzarella. I love the tanginess of the Gouda and I love the creaminess of the mozzarella. So I'm using these two together, just like that. And on the second one, we'll go American with it and I'll put some homemade pizza sauce. Just enough to cover the bottom. A layer of cheese. And then my favorite kind of pizza is a vegetable pizza, so I'll get some onions on here. I love red bell peppers, or any bell peppers on pizza for that matter, so use any bell peppers you can find. And then some olives. And the final step is a little, a light coating of the herbed olive oil just a little bit so it can get nice and golden and flavored. And these are ready to go in the oven. I'm gonna put these in the oven for 15 to 20 minutes and I'll show you what they look like. As so I just have one pizza stone and it's usually in the center of my oven so I like to bake one tray at a time, one tray at a time so that way that crust can hit the really hot pizza stone even though it's on the baking tray. It's still gonna get all that heat that the pizza stone holds and it's gonna create a really nice and crispy crust on the bottom, which, which is what I love when I have a good pizza. So while that's baking, I'm going to create a few more. So my paneerlis took about 15-20 minutes to cook completely to get a really nice golden crust and for the fillings to all for the cheese in the fillings to all melt beautifully. If you want to put egg on top of yours and serve it for brunch, take it out at the 10 minute mark, make a little hole in the center and not a hole. <laughs> Move the filling aside and make a little space for the egg to sit in the center. If you don't, it'll slide off like mine did the first time I tried it. And then Crack the egg in a ramekin and then put it on top of the little pizza and put it back in until the egg white is set. That takes about five minutes. I have an amazing brunch pizza recipe in my brunch cookbook that's available for sale on Amazon as a paperback or on my website as a digital download. So if you haven't picked the copy up, make sure you go and you get one because there are lots of recipes in that. But back to the paneerly. The house smells incredible. This is a great recipe. A great recipe to use if you're doing a children's birthday party and you want to make better pizza than your local pizzeria serves. Really good, really versatile. You can serve even the, you can make even the pickiest eaters happy. Let me show you. Look at this. The bottom crust is nice and crispy just the way it should be. There are lots of air pockets. I mean, this is kind of thin, but there are air pockets in the center. The cheese in the crust, the feta cheese, should have melted and just added so much flavor. I'm gonna try this one that has the meat sauce and the tomato sauce and the cheese on top. Try not to burn my mouth while I eat this. Mm. Words cannot describe the goodness. So flavorful really delicious, so simple and easy to make. Use your favorite flavor combinations. One of my favorites that I haven't made today because I didn't have pesto on, on hand is pesto and, and chicken. Go ahead and, and just do whatever you like. Make your favorite combinations and let me know what you did in the comment section down below. I love to hear your ideas and your combinations that you use. Get the recipe on the website, www.demetriusdishes.com and it's also underneath the description box down below. All of the filling ingredients that I use that require recipes are gonna be found up in the card section up there. Thank you guys so much for spending time with me today. I will see you all next time. Yes, us.